Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Uh, in today's session, I will briefly explain the different types of glands. You know what are glands? Glands, they are the special structures present in our body or in different organisms uh, which are made up of uh, a group of cells that are secretory in nature. Now these secretions, they are of different types, they are playing very important role in our body and they are actually controlling our uh, body systems. As the control and coordination, it is all over controlled by which particular system? It is the nervous system, isn't it? On the other hand, there is another system that is controlling and co coordinating different functions of our body. And that is actually which one? It is the uh, hormonal system or you can call it as the endocrine system. Now this endocrine system, basically who is playing the master role over there? It is these glands, right? So this is one of the example that what is this gland actually? Now, depending on the uh, type of secretion, uh, then where these secretions are, uh, they are functioning actually. On that basis, there are different types of glands. Let us see what are they and let us just briefly explain it. Uh, glands, they can be number one, exocrine or endocrine, then they are paracrine and autocrine. So, these are the uh, major four categ uh, categories. Right. Now, what actually these means? What does it uh, mean here? Secondly, what are the functions? What type of secretion is there? And how they are classified actually? So, basically, all these are secretory in nature and therefore they are the part of the glands or they are the type of the glands. Right. Uh, beside this, now if it is secreting of something, then where is it going to function? And what is it composed of? Isn't it? That is the important point now. So, exocrine gland, as the name is suggesting, exo means what? Outside. Right? So, these type of glands, the exocrine glands, they are actually secreting out their, uh, secreting a particular secretion. They are secreting some of the chemicals and the, the secretion which is containing this secretion is further transported to some other site where it is going to function. Now, if it has to be transported to some other site for its functioning, then definitely it will use some medium. How is it transported? That is the basis so as to classify these particular glands, right? So, in the case of exocrine glands, the uh, secretion is transported through the duct. So, these are the special glands which are, uh, which are connected to their uh, target site with the help of the duct. Right? Uh, now, this duct as it is transporting the secretion to the duct. So, where this target site should be located? If something is to be transported through the duct or a small tubular structure, then definitely it cannot move to the very long distance. Right? So, these are the special glands in uh, which are having the target site in the nearby origin. And of course, the secretion is transported through the duct. Can you think of some examples? Uh, one such example uh, is a liver and I am quoting this specific example for this exocrine because I know you are very much familiar with this particular gland. It is the largest gland in our body system, right? And is, the, uh, is playing a very important role in our digestive system. You know where this liver is present? It is present in the right hand side of our uh, abdominal cavity towards upper side. We can say below the diaphragm on the uh, right hand side. Right. Uh, now this particular liver, it is the secretion uh, which is coming out from the cells is actually the bile juice. Fine. And bile juice is now where it has to be transported. It is transported to the uh, small intestine. The very first part of small intestine that is the duodenum. This duodenum which arises from the uh, lower part of the stomach and is uh, somewhat S shape or inverted U shape structure and which is further going to coil. Right? Uh, means it is folded into many coils and having the uh, uh, finger like uh, uh, projections that we call as the villi. So the point where it uh, this uh, bile juice is received is actually this uh, is, uh, the first part of the small intestine that is the duodenum fine and what this uh, uh, bile juice is doing here in the small intestine it is basically providing the bile salts and the bile pigments and these bile salts are making the internal medium alkaline 
and this alkaline medium is a specifically required for the functioning of different enzymes which are coming from the pancreas or from the intestinal glands fine so this is how we can say this liver is one of the uh, is a uh, is an example of the exocrine glands fine the next one is the endocrine gland uh these endocrine glands they are known as the ductless glands also the, uh, there are many glands in our body and together they are forming the endocrine system and this endocrine system is playing a very very important role in the control and coordination of uh, of various activities taking place in our body uh there are many examples uh, of this particular system like uh, uh, if you begin from your anterior side that is from the skull region or from the head side then definitely you must be aware of the pituitary gland uh, then you must be knowing about the pineal body then comes your thyroid glands parathyroid glands thymus then uh, further uh, like uh, uh, adrenal glands and so on there are many glands which are constituting this endocrine system and it is because of this system that we are uh, functioning in a well maintained manner right now what are the specific properties of this endocrine glands these endocrine glands as i have already told you they are the ductless glands that means the secretion is coming out right it is secreted out of the cell but where is it going to function it is not uh, transported through any of the duct so if they are not transported through the duct then uh, uh, is it so that uh, they are functioning in the nearby region only it is not so they are transporting to the long distance sites the target site is of course located in the far regions in our body and uh, if it is uh, far located then the transport of such type of uh, secretions occurs through the blood that means the uh, secretion which is coming out from the endocrine glands it is transported to the target site through the blood right uh, now the special uh, feature of this is that the secretion is actually known as the hormones these hormones they are the chemical messengers which are controlling the, our different uh, body functions and uh, they are secreted at one site and they are always having the target site at some other point this is a special feature over here fine uh, for example as i have already quoted something earlier uh, let let me give you just one example so as to clarify the point and that is let us say it is a uh, 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 ovary ovary is a gonad or it is a uh, structure which is present in the female reproductive system and uh, this ovary is responsible for secreting out the specific hormones which are controlling the secondary growth of a female secondly it is uh, also controlling the uh, reproductive cycles or uh, different features or different functions during the pregnancy period right so ovary is one of the hormone uh, i'm sorry it is one of the gland which is a part of endocrine system it is ductless because whatever hormones are there they are uh, released out into the blood and they are controlling many different functions of our body is it it for example uh, development of breast development of uh, hairs in uh, i'm sorry development of hair in different body region then the regulation of menstrual cycles and so on all these are the functions of the hormones secreted by the ovary now of course ovary is located in the lower abdominal site isn't it uh, but of course if we are comparing it with the function the functional site it is varying it is having different locations in our body isn't it so this is why i am saying that endocrine glands they are secreting the hormones but these hormones are having the target site which are of course far away from the secretion site uh, you know there is one example which there is one uh, gland which is serving as exocrine as well as endocrine uh, both you know what is example of that it is pancreas this pancreas it can serve as the exocrine as well as the endocrine glands uh, when we say uh, we, when we concentrate on the exocrine function right uh, then i can give you example like the uh, enzymes right pancreatic enzymes which are secreted in the form of pancreatic juice by the pancreas the specific cells of pancreas right on the other hand in the same or, uh, gland uh, there is another group of cells that is known as the islet of langerhans right these islet of langerhans they are made up of alpha and beta cells and these cells are specifically secreting out the hormone that is insulin and the glucagon 
and this insulin and glucagon is actually maintaining the sugar level of our body so all over it is functioning throughout in our body fine it is a, a regulator of a glucose metabolism we can say right so that is uh, this pancreas is an uh, example which is uh, both exocrine as well as the endocrine gland next uh, to introduce here <coughs> these important point uh, i can uh, tell you there are other glands which are paracrine and autocrine uh, these uh, you may not see in your books but definitely these are the other types and they are of course very important and i should introduce you while we are understanding the different types of glands so paracrine glands <coughs> they are those which are actually secreting out the secretion and uh, they are uh, diffused out of the cell and the target site is nearby only so the transportation is merely taking place through the diffusion process it is nothing uh, it is neither uh, through the blood or it is uh, neither nor through the duct right but if duct or uh, this transporting medium both is absent then of course the diffusion is the only process which can uh, which can transport the hormone to uh, i'm sorry the secretion to the target site the chemical secreted in these secretions to the target site fine and further the another one is the autocrine system or the autocrine glands now these are the specific uh, glands which are actually secreting the particular chemical and the target is the cell itself the cell which is which has secreted out the particular secretion same cell is the target site for that particular molecule this is a special type of uh, we can call it as a secretory gland or the secretory cell and the examples we can say like uh, uh, in the <coughs> lymphocytes or in the cell signaling right uh, the cell signaling you know what is cell signaling cell signaling basically is uh, uh, the response of a cell given to a particular uh, uh, stimulus in the surrounding so i can say it is at a cellular level definitely so if suppose there is a uh, some uh, uh let us say some lymphocyte is there and it has to be activated it has it has to recognize some antigen in this uh, in its surrounding and then it has to respond to it isn't it so if this response is to be given specifically then definitely the cell has to be activated it should first recognize so such type of recognition then it's uh, uh, further function or the activation of the cell for that such type of molecules are playing a very important role so these are the different types of glands and uh, um, this is just a summary of this particular topic fine so further we will come back with some new interesting session till then goodbye see you bye